Hi everyone. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today is talking about performance. And the reason I'm talking about performance now rather than later is because I'm going to start to talk about different storage models for data, um, both from eventual consistent high speed to strong consistent to acid consistent. There's some trade offs there between consistency and durability of your data and the speed of various database operations. But in order to prove that in the next few videos, I need to first of all kind of baseline performance and show you how that's done. What I'm going to do today is show you the performance for gets and sets um, for ground up DB. I'm going to compare that against uh, an open source e value store called Redis. Very, very popular. Um, and we're going to go through that uh, now. So basically, I've written a very simple test here for a measure of basic performance. I'm going to go and get 100,000 keys. I'm going to pre. Want to. You know, suffer <laughs> and, you know, my performance to suffer because of stuff I'm doing in the test. So my test here, I'm using um, you know the Chrono library again in order to have a before and after time, and then I'm doing my hundred thousand things. What I'm doing here is I'm setting the key value, I'm spitting out the time on the average uh, speed, and then I'm also doing the same thing for retrieving a hundred thousand uh, keys. So the same hundred thousand keys, looping through it and pulling back the values there. Okay, so without further ado, this is all uh, compiled, ready to go. So I'll quickly run that. And here we see I'm using a key size max five bytes, which is basically the size of the string uh, from the number in the key. Five characters. Five, yeah, number represented as a string's five characters. I'm running through 100,000 set operations and 100,000 get operations. As you can see, get was insanely quick. Um, so we see there we're hitting about 6,000 requests per second. Uh, on the sets and about that's kind of one and a half million uh, per second on the gets there. So you see, uh, we're going through a good speed on the gets there, much faster than the sets, and there's a reason for that, and that is deliberate. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I've got Redis running in the background. So this is currently configured in memory, you know, in memory only mode by default. So I'm going to go run through here. Quite a complex command. All this basically means is I've got one client um, rather than multiples, which is what the test default has is 50. But because I'm comparing, you know, a single threaded C++ program, which is my program, with an embedded database, I'm comparing that against Redis using its very high speed network protocol. So there's a bit of overhead there on Redis. Um, so I'm just using one client. And then I'm using a key size of five because we had five bytes down here for our key size, so fair. And I'm saying we've got a key space of 100,000 keys and we want you to run through all 100,000 of those keys. And I want you to just run the set and the get test because Redis is fantastically sophisticated, has lots and lots of operations, but we're just interested in set and get, okay? I'm gonna run that against the default implementation in Redis. Um, it's actually done a background DB save there. It cost it a little bit. As you can see here, we've got 100,000 requests completed in 4.5 seconds. We're getting 21,000 requests per second, whereas I was getting 6,000. And uh, on the gets there, they're getting 22,000 requests per second, whereas I was getting one and a half million. Now that's a huge difference. So why is there a difference there? Well, let's have a look at our set and get code. So if we go into the database implementation file, if we look in the get here, we see that we're just looking at this variable here. Now this variable here is simply, uh, a unordered map in memory. So our get is only ever pulling from memory. But if we look at our set implementation here, uh, if I can find it, set key value, we are putting it in memory, but we're also doing this. Now this is opening a file stream for each key, saving um, the key value into that file and then calling close. What close does is not only does it stop writing, it actually forces a flush on the underlying storage, which forces an f-sync in the operating system, which basically forces that write to hit disk before this function returns. So we're being very paranoid there in making sure that absolutely everything hits disk. Now that's not what Redis is doing by default, but we can configure Redis to do that. So if we uh, have a look at uh, this Redis config file, um, I've put append only yes, so we're using the append only file, so we're writing to disk. Uh, and we're doing an f-sync after every single write. If I run uh, Redis 
Saved up here. Here we go. We're running Redis with that configuration, so slightly different from the default configuration. Um, and then we run the exact same benchmark again. We should see a slower set. So we had 22,000 ish before sets. So if we run it through now, we see the average rate there is much, much lower. We just let it finish the 100,000. Be a few seconds this time, I think 16 seconds we had it in. There we go. So we see it's done 6,353.24 requests per second. That is uh, still slightly faster than, than what we're doing, which is fine because I've not optimized my code at all yet. There's, those of you that know C++ very well have spotted lots of problems in here. That is deliberate. Um, so we see we've got equivalent speed now pretty much against Redis because we've forced Redis to always do that f-sync after every write, what we're doing. Uh, so we see it's a much fairer test. Now their get um, is still you know, a fair bit uh, slower than ours, but to be fair, Redis has got a lot more functionality than ours, and this is really a trade-off that you get throughout every database. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna stop this video, uh, and in the next video what we're gonna do is we're gonna abstract out um, the underlying storage mechanism for my key value store. So the semantics of using the key value store will be the same no matter what the storage mechanism is and we'll just plug in a storage mechanism so we'll have one storage mechanism very much like redis which is in memory only and we'll have another storage mechanism which is very much like our uh, set e value function there which is always f-sync and being absolutely paranoid and then that gives us the two extremes and then we can add implementations in the middle and see how they perform uh, but i hope you enjoy this video please do subscribe and uh, you'll get notified when the next one's about.